Ati has left us. When will Ati come back? All right, we are live. We are live indeed. Yeah, one second. <laughs> hello, hello to the live stream. Uh, I am Morgan Forbush. I am a master student of cultural anthropology here at UWM, and I will be doing the dungeon mastering today. Yeah, like, can we just get a, a test of the stream, stream audio? I got an app for 15 seconds. <laughs> classic. Absolute bloody classic. Uh, well, it says we're live. All right, nice. So that's, that's plus. Good. Let me unmute my Twitch. Sounds good to me. All good. You can talk and I can talk and we're all talking together. <laughs> I think I am a little... Hello, Luke. Hello, Luke. What's up? Are doing introductions? Should I introduce? Um, Go for it. I'm Luke, uh, cultural anthropology, social anthropology master's student at UW Milwaukee. I play Verifa, the dwarf artificer. Alrighty. Matthew? My name's Matthew Carrick. I'm a PhD student at UW Milwaukee, and I play Balgir Karkehe, the um, human druid. Um, that's me. That's me. <laughs> Just trying to sort. <laughs> Probably do want to show non-video participants less disruption. Doesn't matter to me. You do whatever you want. Um, and then Ati's here with us, but he's muted and deafened and he, he's they'll be right back. Yeah. Um so what happened the last time? I will do a while we're figuring things out, we'll get a rough recap. So you guys were in the crypts, you had found this strange room, and you were investigating. <laughs> so you investigated you were looking at the, the ritual circle and all the dead people you did that before and then you came back and you were like okay well let's explore this crypt a little bit more heavily uh, you guys went up um, went up the back way went up the this other let me get a shadow over here went up the other staircase into the back of the church and you were met with some very confused workers who are like, why are you here? Please leave. Um, Lud stole one of their books um, <laughs> that was sitting out. So that's a thing. Uh, oh, Ren can't make it today. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Basically, uh, yeah, go ahead and continue on. We were just doing our thing when it, <laughs> the stakes got real high, and uh, our um, our sort of spiritual, the spiritual leader of the group was uh, dragged far below the earth, and yes. now we are uh, left uh, much like the Fellowship uh, post Moria. Give them a moment for pity's sake. That should be the name of the session. Actually. Hmm. You should do that. What, um, uh, who is our, what, uh, who was dragged to the... So after you found the book and then you met some guys who were wearing some weird robes, you decided to stick around and there was a ritual being done in the ritual room. So you guys were observing that and there was loud, a loud cackling laughter, a lot of wind, a lot of furore. Um, and then Jarl went to investigate a little bit more, and then all whatever broke loose. It seems like a giant portal was loosed upon the room, sucking pretty much anyone and everyone into 
a hole, and every, it was a lot of wind, a lot of a huge whirlwind enveloped the room. Uh, Yarl could not escape in time and was sucked in with everyone in the room, and what was left was like a ten foot hole of, into the ground. And no Yarl in sight. So that's what happened last, last time. So. And Verfa was there. Verfa was there. That was there. canon. That was okay. decidedly canon. Uh, but however... But little does everyone know that while I was opening the uh, the caskets in an episode previous, uh, I hit my head. <laughs> and uh, I've been in a state of amnesia this entire time. <laughs> just I'm just now back knowing what's going on, Ojin. We figured you're and I'm very disoriented. <laughs> yeah, you're very disoriented. You're like mumbling. You're like looking through like the the because you've got a prayer book. So maybe you're looking through that prayer book and mumbling to yourself. And then you like you bump into like Lud and Haya, who just watched Yarl get eaten into a portal. And you're like, oh, what's up? Baba Yaga. That is where we can start. We don't got Ren today. Um, so we're only got three players, and that's a okay. So we're we are still in the we outside the crypt, but the the portal hole that consumed Yarl is in the crypt. Yeah, so you're like hanging out side of the entrance to the ritual room area. So you're in the catacombs, you know, the hole that punched into the crypt. Mm -hmm. That's where you are. Um, and. This just happened, and I think Haya had just jumped down into the hole to like look around and try to look for Yarl. Yes. So, so is the portal still open, or there's just a hole there? There's no portal, it's just a hole. Okay, hey, fair fellow, I'll jump into <laughs> You hear this, you, hear, you heard a deafening roar, things happened, and then what was left is just a hole, and everything's really quiet now. It's kind of eerily silent now that the... the, the <laughs> Freaking in wind has stopped. Um, are the um are the acolytes still there? The ones who were attempting the ritual? No, they are also they also got eaten. So everyone in the room has is has been consumed. Consumed. Including the, um, the raccoons. <laughs> I made the raccoons into little generic minions. Yes, so. I see that. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, Haya's in the hole. Haya's in the hole. Therefore, we'll jump in with him. Okay. Um, so what you kind of uh, see in this room is everything the... Most of the floor has given way into this big hole. There's still a few remaining tiles and caskets along the wall, although there are some caskets that have kind of, after everything happened, fell into the hole and kind of resettled in the room. Uh, you can see the foundational, the walls aren't necessarily, they're not impacted, so you're not going to worry about caving, but they do look like they've been, you know, uh, rather whipped by the furore and the wind, so you can see there's scar marks on the wall. Um, and yeah, and there's a few caskets, there... there's a few dead, you know, skeletal remains that are popped out of caskets hanging around. But... Is, the... is there anything sticking out of the wall portion? Or is it sort of just like carved out smooth rock material? Um, there's a little bit of a ledge from where the previous floor was, um, but it's it's probably like three or four feet worth of material, and then the rest of the room has just kind of been carved out and is a big hole. There's no like plumbing or oh, what do you mean material or um plumbing or anything? Not really. Um, okay. You can see some compacting and some like striations uh, along 
the along the <laughs> along the the wall. I guess you could say wall of the hole, side of the hole, where you can kind of see where they compacted down things or dug into the dug into the ground to set stone and such. But yeah, these are all things that Fairfo would pick up on, I'm sure. <laughs> Fairfo would be like, "Oh, look, the strategy." <laughs> Balgir's not going in the hole. I stand on the edge of the pit looking down um, at Firfa and um, Haya. And he'll shake his head and say, Yeah, come on, man. Okay, man, get down here. Fit you saying, the man's gone. Fell into the hole. Deep into the earth. All we can say is at least he'll be happy now. Back down there. And anyway, it was always, yeah, nah, I know Balgir holds back his, his critique, knowing that Herfa and Haya uh, held uh, Jarl in high esteem. So, at this point, I think Haya is raging. Okay. And attacking everything he sees. Like the walls, the the soil, the rumble. When whoever comes, whoever, uh, and crying, raging and crying, and saying like in a way, in that like I I, I cannot go into a rage mode right now. I don't feel it, but like maybe next time if we are if we are lucky, we can I can go into my rage 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 mode, uh, and saying not again. I won't lose an, another one, but just like at the end of it all, he goes on his knees, like kind of goes goes to that like like uh, position uh, on the floor, kind of like covering, trying to cover himself, crying, and you hear this like awful, like, painful cries. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, so he's not happy. He's not feeling it. Uh, Verfa is primarily uh, thinking about you know, the material components of whatever magic happened here. And he's going to go... Uh, so the center of where the little actual swirling portal vortex thing. That's still, is that now, can we, is it like a deep hole, like a shaft, or is it like sealed up like flat? Like a, um, you know, like a bottom of a pit? It's pretty much the bot, like the bottom of a pit. Um, you might see the, the remnants of like the circle. So like maybe there's, there's a imprint on the bottom of the pit or maybe there's a few sigils that you can kind of make out on the bottom of the pit but pretty much it's just flat and it doesn't go any deeper than the rest of the hole it's just it seems like this whole part has just was just like everyone and anything there was picked up and moved okay so Griffa is going to go to as close to the center as he can you know safely get based on general you know, whole shape and use his uh, pick miners pick and his alchemist tools and spend some time seeing if there's anything special about <laughs> the, mat the material makeup of the um, the you know, rock in the pit where the, the portal at some point was sort of reverse engineer it based on Changes that may have taken place in the. Um, give me a nature roll. Maybe. What do you normally use for like your stonework stuff? Uh, history for like actual like on purpose stonework, but uh, arcana or nature makes sense to me. Makes sense to me right now. Yeah, we'll use nature. We'll use nature. Uh, so, thirteen plus six. Plus six, 19. Okay, so with that 19, you're kind of picking around. 
And generally, the soil in this area is kind of a loose. Pulling, I have to pull out my like my archaeology field work experience. It's a <laughs> loose sediment, kind of gravelly. Um, <laughs> Uh, but as you're kind of investigating and looking at the like striations and looking at specifically where they had put this ritual, the, the, the ritual circle, you can kind of notice it feels a little bit more um, uh, like silty, almost, where it feels like it was, like you can, you can imagine, like black sand beaches kind of feeling where it, uh, volcanic rock has kind of been broken down over time. That's kind of what you're seeing where the ritual circle is. Um, so it's different. And you're pretty sure that there's been no volcanic activity in this area, so it's weird. Um, but yeah. And it's, so it's, it's almost like um, quick sandy. -ish. Yeah, quick sandy-ish. It's, it's kind of just... It's sand made from the salt, pretty much. <laughs> so, okay. so. I, I'm using my experience black sand beaches in the UP, which are not actually uh, natural. They're just black, just black sand <laughs> from the mines put there. Um, but it's not quite the same. But yeah. I'm going to taste it. You're going to taste it. It, it tastes... Um, it tastes pretty uh, like like dirt. It's been covered by dirt for a while, although you get the, the slight taste of like I don't know sulfur. I feel like, I feel like it might be sulfurous. It's kind of eggy. <laughs> Challenging my DM skills, like making me come up with ge geology. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm. Ultimately, what I think I'm trying to do is decide if it can be magically manipulated into uh, portal-like <laughs> okay. thing again. But. So, kind of with that goal in mind and looking at it, it stuff doesn't seem like it was manipulated or it has any, like... Well, we're only in our Kana check. Balgir looks disparately, dispiritingly down at the. Whoa! Net oh! 20. A net twenty. Well, there you are. Plus uh, four, plus two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a twenty-six. It's also a natural twenty. <laughs> so with that natural twenty, you're looking at this stuff, and this, this, the sand, and the soil around you doesn't look very. Like, it doesn't look manipulated, it kind of looks like it's just been disturbed. Like I said, like someone picked up this whole chunk and moved it. Um, however, as you're kind of looking at this more, like this volcanic substance, kind of where the ritual circle resided, you, you definitely feel it's not quite of the mortal plane. Um, it kind of looks like it's... Uh, it feels otherworldly, kind of. Uh, I don't know how much experience has Verfa had with like other realms or experiencing other bits and bobs from different realms. Um, or planes. He would have, yeah, he would have come in contact with. Well, I have Fey Touch, so. Um, so that came from somewhere. Uh, we can get creative with that, but I mean, he would have come come in contact with like materials from other planes, but ha has himself not been okay. You know, into the Feywild or anything. Yeah, so the, this stuff that you're looking at is definitely not from the mortal plane. Um, and the more you're kind of messing with, the more you're you're looking at it and investigating it with your adult eye and things, you kind of realize that this stuff seems to be from. Um, from the Underdark, from what you can tell. Kind of this filthy bottom of a cave sort of silt. Um, and that kind of gives you this feeling. As well, you're kind of looking at it, it looks like it was formed in some way here. Um, like 
possibly if the Underdark is underneath the mortal plane. Like, this is where, like, the Underdark's top hits the plane. And so that's, that's like, the top of the Underdark sort of thing. A very strange thing. I don't know. <laughs> You're kind of like, okay, so this is supposed to be here, but it's also not supposed to be here, if that makes sense. <laughs> it was almost as if, like, the top, you know, the, the top 50 feet low and the top and the 50 feet above or whatever just sort of flipped over kind of and yeah yeah i could i think that i think that makes sense so that's what you get out of your your net 20 with silt yeah, it <laughs> seems seem like kind of a waste no. um, <laughs> unfortunately it is but. Oh, i will uh go over to Haya and mm -hmm. exp explain that. And with the, you know, sort of, with the, uh, with the heavy emphasis on the fact that all signs point to the fact that Jarl, that this portal in some way is connected to the Underdark. So Jarl is also more likely than not in the Underdark, which is where he was apart from Carl. Yeah, I don't know about that. Like, how, who, under which conditions, you know? We're looking for a silver line in here. <laughs> <laughs> Valgir's gonna yell down from above you. Are you two done eating dirt? Can we move this conversation to a tavern? Or at least get a move on? This place gives me the creeps. I didn't even want to be falling down any holes. Number one, never done eating dirt. Number two, yes. <laughs> and you, Haya? You ready to get drunk about this? No. You've got to leave this place sometime. You can't be jumping in the hole after it. It's all gone. I just... Uh, I just don't believe that alcohol can help something like this. Like this. Arpa is going to... Okay, one more thing. <laughs> And then go to the center of the. Uh, oh, for goodness' where the sake! Stand is and uh, take out a shovel and dig as feverishly as you can. Jingsman! Okay, so you're you're digging in the in the pit. In the sand, yep. Okay, in the sand. Black sand. Um. So you're doing that. I'll say to Haya. All right, well, maybe you didn't want to think about it, but you at least will get some nice fatty meat to line your stomach. When was the last time we even had a hot meal? That manticore had me shitting liquid for a week. Hiya uh, doesn't actually, like, reply. You know, when, when you're too sad to eat or drink or be alive. Ah, He's yeah, kind of feeling that right now. I wouldn't call it depression. Depression is something else, but he is severely sad. Right You're now. grieving. You're grieving. You're grieving. I get it. But he's, he's, he might not be dead. You know? I, I did not understand what you said. I said, you're grieving. I can see that, yeah, I understand. but you might not be dead. Dead. Aye. It okay. could still be alive. I'm sorry. It's just like, the, the accent is too thick. I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> I'm like, yes. I'm like, ah, yes. <laughs> because I was like, what was that have anything to do with deed? And then I understand it was dead. Okay, uh, 
Sorry. Yeah, but I, I lost them both to a hole in the ground. You mean the other boy? That was his name again. Carl. Carl. Carl and the Jarl. Yeah. Tragic. Oh. Can you even see? Too dark in here for me to see. I see just fine as he shovels another shovel full of How long is he going to be? Maybe somebody through the monastery will come down and investigate, and then we'll have to think on our feet. Um, worth pointing out for for um, reminder's sake, um, both the proprietor and the like the old priest that was giving you a hard time, um, both were there, and they both got you. <laughs> so I uh, don't know what's going to happen with this church. Um, but in the hole, you're digging, um, you're digging some black dirt. And are you keeping any of this, uh, any of this black sand? Yeah, spoil heap there. Yeah, spoil heap, okay. <laughs> you're digging, you're well, kind of digging through... A passive perception to... <laughs> <laughs> passive perception. Um, so, you know, it takes a you know, you're, you're digging, it's easy to dig. Um, but as you're kind of going through, you start to hit a little bit more boulders and such, and you get about, I don't know, well, it's like sand, so it's both hard to dig and it's easy to dig. Um, but you know, you get about like three feet down, and it's still, it's still going. And as you're kind of shoveling, you realize that this stuff goes down for a long time, um, and you could be here digging forever, and you'd still just come up with a bunch of black sand. Um, but sifting through, you kind of come across some, like, bits of coal, or, like, compressed, um, kind of rocks that are made of, like, bigger rocks that are basalt, that kind of stuff. That's kind of what you start finding as you're, you're making your way down. But nothing really okay. too important, I would say. You try. So if there's some, if there's, so no, like, plus two magic items or anything. Um, no, no, no. So I'll, uh... <laughs> You know, if there's some decent chunks of coal, that's something that uh, Fairfoot could make use of. So he'll, just, you know, tuck them in a pocket or something, and then, um, and he'll hop out of the, the hole and head back by the others, and uh, let them know that it is not just a, you know, like it's not just a tunnel. It's like a What are you going to do? What do you think, Lud? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I said, what do you think, Lud? I was just kidding. <laughs> What's probably going through this book and trying to figure out what's going on? I didn't even try to talk to Lud just now. It doesn't he deal well with this kind of thing. Most likely, we won't be able to get anything out of him until we put something in him, if you know what I mean. And by that, I mean booze. Last. Last time when I was absent, did we? Did anybody make any further uh, exploration of the artifacts upstairs? No. Most time uh, was spent in the crypt doing, or in the catacombs, exploring and figuring out what's going on and such. Okay. Well, given that the proprietor and the the priest are now gone, now might be a great time. For us to go up there and look at those things. It's true. Aye. Uh, Aye. So, leaving the catacombs, do you want to leave through the entrance that you originally entered through? Or did you want to leave through, like, the back staircase out of the crypt and into the chapel? I think the one... Wait, what? Oh, I missed that. I missed that there were two. Yeah, this this is a stairwell over here. This right here, that's a stairwell. Okay. Yeah, let me just go. Um, 
and it goes up to a back room area, and or you can go back to the catacombs, um, and go up the way that the proprietor sent you down. But they lead, they both lead to the church? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go this way because it's closer. Fair enough. All right. All right. Well, we best get the move on. You're coming higher. He is BRB for a second. Oh. <laughs> As I move piece of the stairwell. Okay. <laughs> So, going into the church, uh, let me drag you over to the church pictures. Ta-da! Okay. All right. So, getting up into the church, you're kind of met, it is now nighttime. So, it is, so you went into the crypt at about you know, midday, noonish. Um, you know, you walked around, looked for stuff, investigated and things. And now you're back out. It's about eight o'clock, um, but it's summer-ish time, so it's not necessarily the sun hasn't set in set, but it's maybe getting towards dusk. Um, and yeah, and you can kind of see that there's, you kind of walk out of the, the back uh, chapel area, and it seems like the church is pretty much empty. Um, uh, someone give me a perception check, or people give me perception checks. All right. Ho ho. Uh, and 19, natural 19. Uh, okay. 17, depending on if I have a damage, or not a damage, um, efficiency or anything. I think so. Okay, that's good enough. Um, you do kind of hear some shuffling and some discussion happening towards the front of the chapel uh, with the 19. You can tell it's a lady's voice, and you recognize it from, um, he was kind of the wide-eyed employee that you encountered in the back of the chapel, along with that older gentleman that was very uh, crass with you. Um, but you can kind of hear her voice and you hear someone else's voice. And they just sound like they're going to lock up, but they're also talking about, did you hear that really loud rumbling? And it seemed like it was coming from below and it kind of shook and you can, it, it shook this and that, but we picked it up and everything should be okay. I, I hope that, you know, whatever they're doing tonight works out for them and, and then tomorrow everything will be okay. And it seems like they're just kind of locking up and kind of a somewhat oblivious. Like they feel like something has gone wrong, but it's not in their paycheck to go look at what's wrong. <laughs> they're like, it's not my job to do that. Um, but as you're kind of looking around the area, just in general, because they're far up in the front of the chapel, so they haven't seen you or heard you yet. But it's a big, it's a chapel, so you can definitely hear it echoing throughout. Um, and as you're kind of looking, you can kind of see some of the stained glass, the windows that were windows that weren't shattered. You can kind of see that they're a little bit more worse for wear. You can kind of see there's a few cracks. As you're walking up the stairs, you saw this, like a few, a few more cracks in the foundation, and there's a few more things that look like they're a little bit offset. So this definitely did a number on the church, whether it's uh, felt outside, you're not entirely sure. Um, but looking around, it looks like all the artifacts are still out. It seems like a few pieces are uh, misplaced. They might have fallen off the tables and things were happening and they were put back. Like <laughs> there any... Uh... Misplaced concrete. Misplaced concrete. Uh. Ah, misplaced. Nah. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Thomas wasn't here for that. <laughs> Thomas wasn't here for the fun. He he lives on in spirit. 
with his misplaced concreteness. Do we need to make the diagram build? That's the question. Perhaps yeah. we should um, light a perhaps we should light a candle for him. Uh, for our fallen comrade. Well, does, does Verfa does Verfa hear the folks on the other side of the room? Um probably. We should wait for them to leave. What did you say? Sorry. So then we should probably wait for them to leave before we light a candle or something. Yeah. Why? Well, I mean, maybe, I mean, the question is whether or not the prior guy made good on his uh, claim that he was going to tell people that we were actually down there making our assessment of the... Why? Maybe we could get some money out of this whole situation. There you go. Hi, uh, you're the best Absolutely. looking and most charismatic of us all. Yeah. Go and tell them, you know, about the the things that's happened and and how we, you know, if 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 maybe if they give us money, then we could come back and uh, and 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 do precautionary work. Yeah, but well, no coming back. That's the thing. Do you you want me to light then? Well, I mean. They, they lied to us, didn't they? I mean, all this stuff that's been going on, and they, and they put us in a pretty awful situation. I uh, only fair that we get a few bob out of it, you know, a couple coin. I, I think, and he is like, I rather would like to kill them because of the lies they. They told me, told us. Oh, really? Wait. Yeah. That's no... Is that them who were doing the ritual? It's all dark, didn't they? And I couldn't really make out, you know, if it was going on. Potentially. Are those the ones who are responsible? Or are you just... raging? Are you absolutely raging just now? So... Haya also do, do not have, uh, does not have um, dark vision, so he's also like, not seeing much. Like, do they do they sound the same, DM? So these people, so you hear one of the girls that you encountered before all the ritual, she just had come in and been like, oh, why are you here in the back chapel area when you came up the first time? And they're like, why are you here? And then someone else came. Um, but she did not, she was probably not involved in the rituals um, from what she's saying. She's like, oh, I hope whatever they're doing tonight is like works out for them or something. Um, so it's possible she knows about the rituals, but she was not involved. Well, if you want to, if you want to scare them a wee bit, interrogate them, maybe find out what they know, you know, I don't even mind that. I could, I could, I'm here for that. Whatever you want, Haya. I want to kill them. Are you up for it? Aye. Aye, let's say... Uh, uh, Balgir will look towards Vertha. And? <laughs> what, what do you... Th Go ahead, sorry. You know what? Kill the guy, take the woman prisoner, we can sell her as a slave. Easy peasy. Oh, no. Not okay with slavery. Aye, but... In any form. Gold-blooded mother in a chapel of all places is fine for you. Despite what you humans think of us dwarves, I'm also not a fan of slavery. Yeah, not to slavery under any circumstances. I know any more. Uh, yes to killing because it's quick and easy. Ah, uh, you know what? If that's what you need to do to start putting the pieces back together, go ahead. See what happens. Look, I I came over here, right on a pretty fierce boat, alright, full of people doing all sorts of things when we hit. 
ports on the way. So I'm I'm used to it. I'm used to the brigand lifestyle. And I kind of figured when we when we were hired to save the prince of the realm that maybe those days were behind me. That maybe I was I was gonna move up to a new level of society, be a hero, you know. But now I just didn't gain what to think. And now I'm just I'm just looking I'm just looking to you, Aya, and I'm I'm just thinking, aye, let's do it. Let's let's fucking do it. Let's kill him. Let's just murder the tea and come on. And how long were we down in the uh, Well, how long was yeah, how long was the party down last time out when I was it? It was like Probably like one ish when you went back down, or like when you first started this whole thing, it was like noon or one ish. And now it's getting like dusk time, so it's like eight ish. You've been down there for a long time. <laughs> You've been just wandering okay. around the catacombs and like reading books and moving ca- and moving caskets, you know, things like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, so Verifa's going to say, you know, uh, as a, at a level with you, uh, I don't remember pretty much anything since about noon or one-ish yesterday you know i'm all for what if you were drinking down there you could have at least shared that with me i'm not entirely sure what happened i might have hit my head oh the matter is i'm never much for a killer and i'm even less inclined to do so not knowing what went down Let's take, let's, let's see, let, why don't we go, we'll go beat up the guy, tie them up, ask him some questions, and if it turns out that they know where the other guys are, and you'll say to Haya, we will get vengeance, trust me, we will get vengeance, but, Farfa, he spe- speak on the truth, he's speaking the truth, all right? I can't just be slaughtering, especially in a chapel. We've got to, we've got to, we've got to start with the, aye, aye. And um, Balgair's going to walk over to the two of them at the front of the chapel. And he's going to use his, he's going to, um, uh, basically, he's going to use his tavern brawler strike to sort of, punch the the priest in the face, square in the face, hoping to sort of surprise him uh, and and motivate this um, this vengeance this vengeance arc. You're punching someone? That's right. I'm going I'm going okay. striding across the chapel and I'm gonna punch this this priest square in the face. Okay. I don't. I keep using priest as a as a bad way. He's just a guy who works at the museum, but if, he could be a priest for rituals and stuff, you know. Right. Yeah. So this guy, anyway, they're having a conversation, and we've heard that they know of the people who are down there, right? So mm-hmm. after deliberating with the group um, and seeing how on edge Haya is about just slaughtering everyone, uh, I'm going to go up and uh, instigate. A wee bit of violence in order to stop a lot of violence. So, in a way, I'm a good guy, but I'm gonna punch him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So give. So me... you start the fight technically. Yeah. Yes. He yeah, is yeah. starting. He is. He is starting the fight. So you. How many people punch... are there? There's only two. There's a, a middle-aged gentleman. He's not the old guy that was angry at you before. Just a middle-aged guy. You haven't met him before. But the girl is someone that you've seen before. So it's just a guy and a girl talking. They look like they were closing up. You know, they're like, okay, we put all the stuff back that fell all over, and all right, we're going to close up sort of thing. Um, and then you punch the guy in the face. So give me a... Um, how far away are the... They're at, like... They're about... You get out from the back cathedral, they're in the front of the cathedral. Or chap- chapel. I don't have my church term memorized. Um, so about... I don't 
don't know, 30 feet, maybe? Okay. Well, maybe 60? Yeah, 60. I would say 60. All right. So, so they're about within dashing distance. Okay. So, Erpa, I think my dark vision is 60 feet. Um, being Volgar going, and I mean, I'm assuming my sense, I mean, is posturing, whatever. My sense is going to be good enough that that's, that something's going to go down. I'll get within you know, 30 feet uh, to the ready. Um, okay. But not, not intervene yet. All right, I'm so, trying to. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, get, I'm getting between Haya and uh, Bulgare so that if anything goes sideways with either of them, I can okay. go one or the other. Cool. Um, Bulgare, give me a. What do you roll to punch? Roll me a d20 first off, and I think you're going to add. Uh, I don't, I think you just get your plus, your So I have strength. plus Unless two. But now your proficiency bonus, because you're not proficient with unarmed strikes. Unless you are. I am. Well, then you're, then you get plus two. Why, <laughs> what, Valkyr being proficient in unarmed strikes? I should have known. <laughs> I took the tavern brawler feat. Ah. So it gives me plus one. two with uh, melee attacks. Or just, like, punching. Okay. So roll me to, to hit. All right, d20 plus two. Oh wait, sorry, I've rolled two there. We'll just take the first one of those, the 11. Okay. And plus two, so that would be 12, 13. Yeah, you probably hit him. Yeah, you do. You're Dishman. Not really, you're not sneaky about it. No, uh, not at all. So, so you just kind of, so they're they're talking and then you just, hear shoes upon echoey echoey stone so they hear doo -doo 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 -doo. and then they like they turn to look and they see Belgar barreling towards them and then Belgar punches the guy in the face and you hit him but not very sneakily and you just kind of hear the girl like shriek and go like ah what are you doing <laughs> keep your mouth shut Belgar will say to the the praying uh, girl and okay. uh, and he'll look and the, the, does the guy hit the ground, or is he still standing? Um. Well, you gotta roll me damage for that. Oh yeah. Okay. 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 So. And I don't it's, know what our arm strike. One d four, bludgeoning damage. Okay. Okay. Three. Three. Um. Do three damage, so he doesn't go down. Um. But he does, you know, he's taken aback. He kind of staggers back and kind of looks at you like, D what? Um, uh, so he kind of looks at you very shocked. And he just, he's not going to, he's not throwing punches back at you. He's just looking at you like, what uh, What did I do to you? <laughs> uh, Balagay or Luke, uh, he'll put on his meanest face and be like, I'm looking at the fucking answer right now, man. And then um, I'll wait to see what Haya and Farfa do. I'm charging towards the two people. Okay. And Farfa will say, ah, shit, we're doing this. <laughs> and is there... Well, is there like don't a talk to me about not killing people in a chapel. Their gods just murdered a yeah. bunch of people. In, in Haya's understanding of the situation. Right. So is there, is there like a balcony or a... I'm going to get to a, an advantaged position. Not like a rolling dice advantage, but like a higher position. Um, there's not really. Like, you can kind of see from the, from, the, from the picture. It's pretty flat, except for the altar, which is a few paces above. But that is farther back than you probably want to be. Okay. Is there like a pillar near where the action is taking place? Yeah. Okay. So Verfa is going to do <laughs> try to climb one of the pillars using a leather strap, sort of in a you know, like a lumberjack up a tree type. I'm. Okay. 
Okay. I hang out there in whatever pillar is near the action. Oh, you know, however oh, high up you can. Roll me an yeah. athletics check right. or an acrobatics check. Well, either one, whichever one's higher. Uh, acrobatics <laughs> is higher, so I'll do that. Okay. Uh, Let's get this. Oh, eighteen. Eighteen. Okay, so you you don't necessarily like scurry. Um. But you, you're able to get up into that, up into that spot okay. that you want to be in. Um, okay. However, and you probably get up there. You see Belgar punch. High is starting to run. So you kind of you get up there. Probably by the time that Haya would be getting towards these people, you're kind of where you want to be, depending on how high you want to be. So, you know, if, if I'm within, the pillar's within a few feet, I'm going to be, you know, 20 feet up or whatever, you know, some, so that I'm within 30 feet of the action because then I can use okay. basically. So. Yeah, so you're probably like fifth, 10 to 15 feet up. So I will, uh, and then I will get my hand crossbow so that I'm ready for things go sideways. Okay. So Haya is charging. This guy is like looking at you. Is like wild eyed. He's like, what? I, I just, I just, I just work here. I, I, what do you, what do you want from me? Like, I and the girl is sitting there like, I'm not, I'm not really crying. listening to anyone. Well, is tell him Belgar because Belgar is right in front of him. Like, what do you mean? What answer? What? Haya, you charge. Do you, do you, do you, do I have time to engage in conversation before the um? The, the brutal Haya arrives. Depends on how far I am. If you made it in a round, I could also make it in a round and start attacking. And these things usually, like, we might do this, like, cons- like, one, uh, one, like, one action after another, but it happens in the same time, technically mm-hmm. speaking. Am I able to maybe slow Haya or keep him back and use him as a as a, a sort you already of a, used your attack yeah that's true okay unless okay. you have like a reaction like a sentinel feed mm, well nothing like that i would i would say that you went up and punched so i would say that he's out of turn order he was out of turn order when he did the punch so he's back to his actual turn because when you punch when he punched you were like okay high is charging now that's what I figured is the beginning of like these rounded or okay. actions. Perhaps so I don't actually. It was the it was the woman who we heard talking about the stuff going on. So, um, I'll let Haya do what he's going to do to the guy because it's all just good um, rhetoric, you know, visual rhetoric for uh, this conversation we're about to have with the woman to find out where the ritual d- doers are who we really want to find. On your go, pal! On your, on your go, pal! And you sit there like, you just punched me and you want, like, wh- what, what do you people, what do you, where did you guys come from? We're, we're locking up. If you could leave, that would be great, I guess. I don't know. With the baddies. With the baddies. He's like, I don't understand. <laughs> so he kind of takes a step backwards and he kind of goes, hey, come come on, uh, Janice, we're, we're leaving. And Jan goes, okay. So they, uh, okay. So they start kind of backing away and like moving towards the exit. Hiya, do your worst. Do your worst. <laughs> So going I, to... I, what I'm understanding after all this is that I'm technically able to attack, right? Yeah. Before they leave. Okay, I'm going to uh, run rage, like run towards them, rage and attack. Okay. Natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> he's dead. Who 
who is dead? You get to choose. They're just NPCs, man. You said he. Let's go with he. Okay, nice. he's dead. Nice. She's trying. I'm scream, and I'm scream screaming on her face. And I'm gonna okay. grab. I'm gonna grab. Uh huh. Go ahead. I don't have any more attacks, so that's my turn to. So I'm gonna grab the the, the 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 woman before she flees. Okay, well she faints. Oh, I'll catch her in my arms. Okay, because you just killed one of her coworkers. All right, uh, and I'll say I'll say to Verfa, I'll say, how would you even get up there, old man? Get down here and help me out with that. And as I say, I climbed. I'm gonna take my my leather strap and use it to slide down the. All right. Right. Next question. Where we're taking her? Lock the door and go into the pantry. Sorry. And this was your plan. Look, this is a quickly evolving situation. All right. <laughs> you got any smelling salts or something about here? Uh... I have salt. Ah, salt's no, no putrid enough. Need something that's only going to whack her back a week. I'll, I'll use my uh, alchemi alchemist's tools and some salt, and I can borrow some of your whiskey. Oh, I have whiskey, too. I'll use my salt and my whiskey. Try to make a, a smelling salt. All right. Sure. I'll say to yeah, Haya... Maybe. I said to Haya, Aye, don't worry. We'll get the bastards. We'll get these bastards. Who took your brother. Yeah. Who took your mentor. We're going to fucking get these bastards. So that, is that medicine, then? Uh, uh, yeah, make medicine. Do medicine. Uh, 16 would be with that. 16. I guess the question is, do you want it to be bad, selling small? Or do you want it to be, like, pleasant, smelling small? We want it to we I think the objective here is just to wake her up, right? Oh, yeah. while we are still holding her. Yeah. But but before before you, you uh anoint her or before you apply you you apply the smelling salts, I'm gonna say to Haya, I'm gonna say, We're gonna get these bastards, but you've got to you've got to contain yourself now. Alright? Cause it's we gotta use a more subtle approach on this scene to get I'm, the information. I'm raging. I'm raging. My intelligence is like minus twenty-five. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, is there any way that I can? I want to send Haya to take his rage out on something, so I can I can talk to her, uh, but keep Haya at arm's length, but use him as a threat. I want to use him as a threat. Uh, for the sake of playing with the party. I'm gonna say you kind of come in, Saya. Or, I mean, fair if I, could I don't want to make this. I don't want to make this party into a murder hobo if people are not feeling. It. Look, it's I'm legitimate. Not going to kill her. For now, in, in my opinion, it's legitimate. You know. Let's do a let's do an opposed uh, strength check to see if Fairfa can grapple him. Oh, good idea. <laughs> I mean, you're raging, so it won't happen, but we can do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's there are natural twenties in the world, right? There are. Uh, nine. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I will be the Uh But it's not a save. Uh, no, not... you gain uh, you gain advantage on strength check checks and saving spell, not attack. Okay. Is it strength or dex? I don't know. Doesn't matter. I can't use either, so that's. Okay. Usually one or the other. No, it's it's much higher than what you're old. Like I would imagine. 20, yeah. 25 or something. You basically knock your over. Okay. But then he kind of comes down to play alone. Yeah. Seeing perhaps that he knocked down his. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Feels yeah. feels guilty that it you know. Mm -hmm. Hiya, what are you doing? That's Alpha. There's on other side. Come on, hold yourself together, man. I can't believe that Balgar Kakenyi 
is the is the most level headed person in this party just now. And uh, Fairfair's gonna say, you know, Balkir, you know, cut him some slack. He just lost his first Aye. friend in this world. Aye, I know too well how like how that goes. We're how gonna that, get them. What that's like. We're gonna get these bastards. Don't worry about it. All right, you got those smelling salts. And I'll hand him the. the well, I got knocked out. Well, Haya has knocked Verfa down. Is Haya now doing something, or is Haya like raging away? No. Angrily hissing. Okay. Okay. Sorry, you like Angry me. but holding back. Angry but holding back. Uh, just draw. Yeah. Okay. So. You're gonna wake up, lady? Aye, that's like any salt, something go. So he'll, you know, waddle his way over, get up and. <laughs> Let her smell ourselves. The sheriff is a waddler, let's face it. <laughs> I imagine all dwarves seem like they kind of waddle after, at, at a point. It's more like that thing of when your backpack is too full and you like walk normally, but it kind of, the weight of the backpack kind of sways you back and forth. So oh, yeah. It you into, it's like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I imagine she wakes up. So yeah, she does. She kind of wakes up and she's screaming still. And she's trying to get away from Belgair and she's struggle busting and. Um, um I'm gonna I'm gonna try and intimidate her. I'm gonna point to her friend and say, "See him? See that fucking bloody corpse over there? Have you um, done want wanna become like that? Piece of pulp? You're gonna tell us exactly if that we wanna know." Exactly, that we want to know. Roll me uh, to, to stay, to keep grappling her. So roll me a athletics check, or an athletics check, whichever one is higher. Uh, athletics, or what? Sorry. Um, acrobatics. I think it's the acrobatics. Uh, grappling is kind of silly. Ah, uh, we got seven. Okay. So she she scrambles away. Get back here! She's just like attempting to find a spot to leave. Did you leave her in the chapel, or did you take her to a side room, or what? I don't know. I was still within pointing distance of the body, you know. Okay. So yeah, she probably is just gonna make a break for the door. Ugh, Fertha. She's terrified. Fertha, the crossbow. Uh uh, yeah, I was going to say, I want to shoot a crossbow bolt right in front of her. Okay. You know, like, if she's running, like, along the wall, to try to get it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, close line or action. Um, what, that, what is that, dex? Yeah, it would be dex. Dex and proficiency, if you're proficient. Yeah. Oops. With the left one. Oh, it's not. It's not plus. It's fifteen plus three. Eighteen plus two is twenty. So twenty. So you do that, and she does not notice it, or does not register it. She's still running. She's going. Mm. How far is she? Um, well, you got them kind of near the, probably within 10 feet of the door. Um, and then you bopped him. And then you probably helped, you know, took her a little bit farther back into the chapel. So I would say 20 feet. So she's about within, you know, 15 feet now of the door. She's right I'm going to cast. How far is she from me? I resumed you're with everyone else, so about five feet, ten feet. Oh, so we well, can if she's, still if she uses half to undo her grapple, so she's ten feet away from you guys, ten feet away from the door. I'm going to uh, cast Misty Step. You can do once a day, and appear in a silver mist right in front of her and try to. Work. Okay. Grapple her. Look up the grapple rules real quick again, because grappling is. Uh, 
Grappling sucks. <laughs> Grappling is the one thing that never... It's really hard to... It's usually strength versus strength or strength or dex check, uh, depending strength. on how you wanna, how you wanna like like free yourself. You can dodge yourself, or you can just like push the person by strength and kind of yeah. try to move. But I always assume that the first like the grappling person, person who does the grab, is usually rolling for strength. And that's what this says. Yeah. So. Do I get, do I get some sort of uh, advantage for an element of surprise? <laughs> um, no, because she's pretty much in hysterics. So there's no way that you can predict reliably what she's going to be doing. <laughs> I mean, if she's running, if she's running to the door, and I appear in front of her in front of the door. But she also might hang a right and just run away that way. So there's no way to predict what she's doing, because she's just in hysterics. Yeah. And then she's gonna... Do... So what'd you get? Eight. Eight. Okay. Boom. She has rolled better than you. <laughs> and she's yeah. rolling out of the bed, well, because, you know. So... You attempt to grapple her, and you get, like, somewhat, like, you try to reach for her leg, uh, or, or try to grapple her that way, and she just kind of fakes loose, and she's a little bit detoured, like, running around you. So she's still about, you know, ten feet away from the door. She's just trying to figure out where, because you just appeared in front of her, so she's like, bobbing and weaving and trying to like look back and be like what the heck is going on and she's just, she's just running she's just running here <laughs> all right and um, well i'm gonna try and beat her to the door um okay. ideally tackle her uh i have some rope um if she's not going to be willingly coerced then i guess we need to uh tie her up willingly coerced <laughs> um so how do I what do you want me to roll to try and um intercept her before she gets to the door? Um, um what do you need to roll? Yeah. Are you trying to grapple her cuz running to grapple? Yeah, I suppose. Uh, yeah, grapple's fine. Yeah, so make me a athletics check and then she's going to make a athletics or strength check. Okay, come on, lucky eighteen. All right, eighteen, and she's gonna roll. She did not roll over you, but you got close. So you get her. You kind of you get her and tackle her to the ground. She's still freaking. Um, and you kind of struggle to get her tied up, but you do get her tied up. Good. Once she's tied up and bound on the ground, I'm going to stand up and try and collect my thoughts and look over to Thurfa and Haya. Right. Now we can ask the questions. And I'll go down on one knee and sort of... Uh, push her so she's looking up at me and I'm going to say right I don't even want to hurt you but if you keep up like this something bad's going to happen you see my friend over there I'm barely I'm barely keeping him under control right now alright and that's because of your friends doing rituals under this chapel that have led to disaster and death so you tell me where are they right now? And maybe we want to kill you right now. She's kind of just gibbering, and she's not quite registering what you're asking. Uh, she goes, "I just, I just, I just work. I, I just, I just, just want to go home. I just want to don't, just don't kill me, please. I just, I, I just, I just work here. And then I just, 
What were you saying before? What were you saying before about about those boys doing doing stuff? At, what were you saying before about that? Don't I never get proud of her name? Well, the the boss said that he and uh, a few people have something like a meeting to do or something. I don't know. Aye, the boss. Now we're getting somewhere. That's the name of your boss. I I don't think I actually ever gave him a name. Uh, the proprietor. Uh, I'm just gonna call him Tom. You know, Tom, the, the proprietor. You met him earlier today. He, he does the tour stuff. Aye. Does he live nearby? I don't. I don't know. I just. I just. I just work here. I don't. Aye. Know where he lives. So you you must have workplace relationships. You can that your boss Tom lives. I know he lives in town, that's all I know. What town? This town? <laughs> Aye. Now we're getting somewhere. What did he say he was going to be doing tonight? Having a meeting with a, with, with a few other colleagues. I don't know. Right. Tom, this Tom guy. Prepare, whatever that means, whatever you're saying. Is he, is he, is he, is he old or young? I don't know, he's like 30, I think, ish. So he's young. Is he single? I don't know. Does he wear a wedding ring? I, I didn't look. <laughs> you've been, how long you been working here for? Since maybe a few months, five months. Few months, and you don't even care if your boss is married or not. Does he? Does he <laughs> flirt with you? Does he come on to you? Maybe that's not the best way to ask. Do you ever see? Do you ever see him come to come to work with anyone else? Do you ever talk about where he's stay? I don't know. Um, I don't know. He's kind of a, he was a kind of a recluse. He just kind of just did his own thing. A recluse, all right. You ever uh, talk about where he lived? No. What about the other people he was meeting with? Well, he, um. Do you know it? Do you know any of them? How'd you get this job anyway? There was. Uh, there was a hiring sign, and I just joined. <laughs> Uh, Fripp is going to jump in and say, do you have any idea what goes on down there? Down where? The crypts. The crypts. No, I mean, sometimes the people, sometimes the older folk want to get buried down down in the catacombs, but, but no one really goes down there. You, you, uh, weren't you the guys that were supposed to be fixing that stuff? Like, sharing the roofs or something? Aye, but it's all gone horribly, horribly wrong. Oh, was there a cave-in? Uh, there was a big, like, shaking, uh, knocked some of the, some of the type press, the, the typing stuff off. We had to put that back. Ah, uh, you can talk now. Tell me where Tom lives. I don't. I, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, he could very well live in the, in the housing, in the housing on the grounds. You know, for the old, you know priest or whatever, he could live there, or, you know, he could live somewhere else in town, I didn't know. Right. Who's an underground for the old priests? Right, we're going there right now. Can I leave? Nah, you're not leaving till we find Tom. O okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull her up, so she's standing, but still tied by the rope. Maybe a wee bit of rope, so it's, she can be kind of on a... So I can hold on to the rope, you know, like a, a little leash that toddlers are sometimes on. Okay. Right. Um, Which way to these these places where these old priests are living? Um. So. So if you take, you can kind of go. You can you can follow me, I guess. If you take the out, 
of the chapel, and she kind of leads you. You're still on the ground. You can tell you're on the ground because it's kind of a fenced off area. Kind of leads you around to the side area, and there's kind of just like a. Wait, wait. Mon higher. Mon further. Get some progress here. I'm right here. Jeez. Bye. Get. Like, literally, like, as close to behind them as you can get. <laughs> Uh, and Scooby Doo, when the person in the front of the line stops, and they all like collide with it. <laughs> okay, sorry. Continue, uh, please. So they get to the outside. You get to the outside to the side, and there's kind of this rundown sort of cottage, made of kind of loose stone. It looks like it hasn't really had the same sort of upkeep as the church chapel thing he has, um, but it still looks like it's livable. It's a little bit. Uh, you can see that it's been the walls have been shorn up, uh, but the stone is quite poor. Cool. So may, may I may I have a blank grid DM? Yes, you can. Let me drag you all down to here. There you go. Perfect. Hey, is this is this what Tom lives in? Kind of goes, I don't know. I kind of assumed that someone lives here, whether it was, it was Tom or, or someone else. I, I, I guess I didn't actually know, but when when we left, typically there was smoke coming out of the, the chimney the chimney area. Yeah, and you said it was dusk, right? So yeah, um, it's maybe a wee bit later now. So is there any lights on in the cottage? Uh, not that you can tell. There's no candle light that you can tell. There's also no mm. smoke coming out of the chimney. I'm gonna, Please. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, uh, the prisoner, I'm gonna take her maybe, like, nearby to a bush, and I'll say to her and Haya, right, go and investigate, I can't even be going up to this cottage, or oh, this gully dude up in a rope, I'll look after her. You're outside? Yeah. You're outside right now. You're on the side, you're probably like the... Like the east side of the cottage. Of the chapel. And there's a cottage. And it does kind of uh, look like like the priest quarters. Kind of like here, you got to live in the chapel, and you, you, you're going to be stationed in the chapel. Here is your quarters, your priest quarters. So, oh, Gary, you're waiting. You want. So, you were. I was getting an email. So, you. Fairful <laughs> was uh, reading a message from the chip plane. The. Um, you want us to go investigate while you stay outside with the. I go and see if this Tom guy's in the cottage. If he's no, see if anybody in that cottage, if there is anyone, gains where Tom lives. But what? Okay, so. Um, now I'm confused in and out of characters. So Tom, wasn't Tom one of the people that was sucked into the portal? Uh, that you can tell, yes. Okay. Yeah, he was one that was gotten eaten. And there's no, there's no, like, uh, said the fire isn't lit, there's no whatever. Yeah. Okay. So Fairfoot will uh, light a uh, lantern and uh, go knock on the door. There is no answer on the door. Or at the uh, door. Said, gonna, uh, are there any windows? Um, there's a few, or they're not really windows, they're more just holes. <laughs> going to uh, peer into whichever one is closest to the door. Okay. And what you kind of see is it kind of looks like a, a very simple sort of cottage. There's a table. Um... There's a rather large table. There's uh, a separate table for maybe like cutting some food, um, a, a bed, and a fireplace. It doesn't look like there's anything. It's like a one-room deal. Yeah, it's a one-room deal. It doesn't um, you look do like see there is a, a shelf um, underneath the window that you're on, uh, but you can't tell it's on the shelf because it's 
like here's the window and then the shelf is right underneath the window the i do window. have is the window like big enough that i could reach in um yeah i have a mirror my equipment so i'm going to reach in the window and try to look at the shelf in the mirror okay so you kind of are looking at the shelf and it looks like there's it's kind of storage area for some bowls there's some old uh, looks like some old stale rushers, I think they're called. Um, bread plates. <laughs> um, look like that they're, they're ready to be put plated on top of each other, sort of thing. Um, and there, there seems to maybe a few um, books of some sort, but there's not a lot on the shelf. Just a few, you know bowls, some, some bread objects, and the like. Okay. I'll just uh, turn around and we'll care. Nobody home. Yikes. Right. What's the next plan? Me? We're still bursting for our revenge. Hi. <laughs> what is what is I doing now? Uh, he's just like silently like following these two, and also like trying to to understand what's going on. As in, like, like what am I gonna do now? Like, how I can find uh, Yarrow? Like. Is it possible I've been trying to find Carl with the help of Yarl, like, aka, like, his kind of, like, the people who, to, who adopted him, technically, and, like, is it even possible to do this with this party? Like, those kind of, like, existential questions, and it's just, like, walking and fo or following or standing, doing nothing in particular but these simple stuff. Look, we find out where this Tom fella lives. Maybe we can find some sort of notes or something, some clue to know where that portal took them and what's going on. You know Tom's last name? Does she know? I, I'll ask her. Do you know Tom's last name? Her name? Family name? No, not not really. Some say he just kind of he walked in, you know, ten. I think of what he said, like ten or ten, twelve years ago, and just or ten years ago, and set up shop. Uh, no one really knows what his last name is or anything. He just kind of just showed up. He's a weird. He, he's he's a weird dude. Um, fine, fine. So, are there uh, people like strolling about? I mean, I know it's evening but um currently around you guys there's not a lot happening you can tell because you're on kind of like on a hill so overlooking the city you can see people kind of nonchalantly moving about it looks like some people are going to um going to some taverns there's people who are shuffling into um their houses or what look to be houses or like closing up shops or that kind of stuff. So there's movement in the town, but nothing up around here at the moment. Okay, so I'm gonna propose, gentlemen, we go into town and ask about Tom, the proprietor, because clearly this uh, employee is not going to be of any assistance. Aye. Well, what are we gonna do with Alan? The <laughs> <laughs> I'll look at her and I'll say, We let you go. Are you going to get us in trouble? No. I, I, look, I just I just want to go back to to, to, to my husband. I, I mean, I just... I, I won't say anything to anyone. If, if you just let me go. Everything, Who's your I, husband? 
Does he know Tom? Was he tied up in all this? Nonsense. No, he, he doesn't work here. He, he works for, 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 for a, a, a tavern. That's all he does. Oh, he does, does he? Look, we let her go. First thing she's gonna do is raise the alarm bell. All right, but we keep her kidnapped, right? Just uh, hear me out, all right? Just hear me out. We keep her kidnapped, we can use her as leverage, right? To ask in town about Tom. Huh? Maybe we could, like, find some place on the grounds here to lock her up and then come back for a later, let her out when we're leaving town or something. I just wish I knew what wiped my memory, because we could just do that to her, and then we wouldn't have any trouble. That's true. That's true. Right. Nobody's living in this cottage, so let's just leave it on. Let's just tie it up and... I don't know. I said nobody was home. I didn't say there was nobody living there. Nutty. Uh, I'm going to look around the grounds for a burial ground, a mausoleum, something. Um, um, well, under, you know, underneath the church, there is the catacombs. I don't want to go back to it now. Gives me that creeps. We're not, we're not just going to leave her to starve to death. I mean, No, we'll come back. I mean, they're going to find the body in the chapel anyway. That's a problem. <laughs> Let's just go lock her in the chapel, walk away, and then we'll try and find out about Tom in time that w the guards didn't catch up with us. Mm. I can see you humming and humming here, Heather. I'm going to just let her go. Let her go? <laughs> You're basically asking to be jailed. You want to spend the rest of your life in prison? Because I didn't. I'm not going back there. I'm pretty good with lots. Right, all right. Well, I look at her and I say, Right, we're letting you live. But if you even tell, you even tell anyone that you met us. Um, may I roll an intimidation check? Oh, cause I got... Roll with advantage, because she's scared shitless. <laughs> Alright, I've got minus two to intimidation. Look at my cat, he's all like curled up. Clearly Balgear is not used to being in this position. Alright, so... <laughs> I'm gonna roll 2d20. Okay, I got a 19 minus two, so that's a 17. Okay. Um... Sorry. Yeah, she seems pretty... Sorry, I was <laughs> dragging things. Uh, she seems pretty intimidated. She's like, I'm not, I won't tell anyone. Yeah. No, I, I just let, let, just let me go. Uh, everything's everything will be just fine. There'll be. Or we'll be back. Or we'll be back. Arthur's gonna say, well, I believe her, and he's gonna take his uh, dagger out of his pocket and cut the rope. Okay. Whoa, 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 that's my rope! And he's gonna cast Mending on them. <laughs> 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 I don't have many. Um, well, maybe I do. I don't care. I've got enough rope. You, you probably um, have mending. Yeah, probably. Um, I mean, right. think about it. There's three of us. It's our word against hers. The only other person there is dead. And her only credible uh, you know, reference is, uh, for all intents and purposes, sucked into the Underdark. So I think we're fine. Right then. Here you go, Shell, or whatever your name was. Janice. Janice. <laughs> That's the name that I gave her. And she, uh, you know, she looks at you guys, and she just bolts. Into the darkness. Into the setting sun, I guess you could say. But. Right. Let's go into town and ask about this Tom fella. See and, if we can uh, get any research off him. Find out where he was living. I bet he was living in a real dirty place, you know. Those sicko cultists. 
if we if we hand wave our way to town, and I'm just Jeff is just going to go up to every person on the street he can find and say, you know about Tom the proprietor, and if they don't immediately start giving an answer, he's just going to move on to the next person. <laughs> What's the name of this town anyway? Uh, I have a name for this town. Uh, let me quickly look it up because I can't remember. Uh, but I did make one. I'm very good at it. As we're walking into town, I'll say to Vertha with, you know, maybe get, try and get out of your shot of Haya. And I'll say, things, Raska. things, things kind of went, oh, sorry, what was the name of the town? Raska. I'll say to Vertha, things kind of wee got, got a wee bit of a hand back there. Yes. But what can you do? I mean, Haya's, you know, he's lost, he's lost everything. I mean, well, I mean, what's what's even what's even keeping us together? What's to stop me and you, say, just like leaving him here? You want to leave him behind? You, me, and Lud could have a fruitful career here. We saved the prince of a kingdom, all right? Prince of a kingdom. So, uh, you know, but higher is. He's, he's gonna drag us down in this doom and gloom quest. I mean, what's keeping us in this? I'm not saying we need to make a decision now, but just remember that, you know, we've got more in common than, than anything to do with Jarl or Carl or whatever. Okay. <laughs> It's such a perfect thing, like, okay. <laughs> yeah, actually, it makes sense. <laughs> right, what I'll, all, I'll, all I'll say is, you know, I've lost closest person to me six times in my life. Not the same person six times, but, you know, six times in my life I've lost the closest person at that given moment. You know, those, every time, for six times, the closest person to me, you know, I've lost them. They've, they, you know, they died. Christ. Or, you know, been sucked into a portal, or you know, that, that these, like, these things happen. What I'm how saying you, is I understand. How do you keep bouncing back? What's that? I say, how do you keep bouncing back? Well, we dwarves, we have a very long life. Uh, you're resilient. That's what I do. Old Dwarven Constitution. Uh, anyway, I think we, you know, I, I hear you. I understand that, you know, you don't want to be dragged down. You're, you're more uh, brisker uh, adventurer than I. So I appreciate what you're saying, but you do need to give I a little bit of time to Aye, right. figure things out. It's okay that he's not okay. Exactly. Today. Aye. So let's just find out where this Tom guy lived so we can go. Because we know his house is going to be empty. The guy was a recluse, you know. So we can, we can go there, shack up, eat our dry rations, you know. Such a boot is place for evidence of what he was into. Sound good. I love this idea that that Belgir interrogated the person like, where does Tom live? Just to find a place to sleep, because you know he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Secret demonic research about this ritual, about this whirlpool that opened up and swallowed up Yarl. We've got to find it. We've got to give Haya some way forward. 
But my, I'm no, I'm no cat cat. You saw, I couldn't even, I couldn't even convince that woman to talk to us. So, Farfa, you've, we've got to find out where this damn guy lives. We've got to talk to the people of Raska. Raska. I'm good with that. And then Farfa's going to do his. What do you know about Tom the Proprietor? What do you know about Tom the Proprietor? What do so you know you... about Tom the Proprietor? Give me a charisma check. Oh, that's my worst. A charisma or a maybe a persuasion check? Do charisma. Okay, charisma, cool. That was my day. I re rolling once for every person I ask. Uh, no, just do. Uh, we can. Pretty good. It's well, let's say 15. you got sixteen. It's well um, minus one for charisma, so fifteen. Minus one. So so with 15, here, let me get a little, what should I say, dice roll here, if I can. All of my d20s have disappeared. They're in here, they're just being recluses, I guess, I don't know. Bam. Okay. <laughs> so you're, you're kind of going like, do you know Tom, the proprietor from the church? Do you know this? And some most people seem they kind of go no uh, I don't. Um, you get one or two people who go oh the the guy who works up at that 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 merchant track up there uh, yeah I, I knew of him uh, I know of him it's not you know, he's not the uh, not the, the the most normal guy but I, I knew him and, but no you don't get a lot of in past tense? What else do you know? Sorry, I'm putting it in past tense. Um, <laughs> but, you know, they kind of like, oh, I know him, but he's kind of weird. I don't really talk to him very much. Um, give me one more charisma check. Where did you say he worked? A merchant trap. It's like a tur tourism trap. Oh, okay. merchant trap. Right, cool. Yeah. Oh, 13, so 12. Okay. So you're, as you're kind of going on, like, do you know this person, do you know this person? You get one guy who does know him. You kind of ask her, like, you there. Do you know Tom? Like, maybe ask a little rashly or a little roughly. And he goes, yeah, I know. I know Tom. He, he was, he's a weird one. And I don't, I don't really talk to him anymore. You know, he wanted to go into business, and then he screwed me out of the business, and I can't believe that what what he did to, to to poor Teresa. And he seems like he has some grudge <laughs> against this Tom man, um, and he's just kind of going off about it. So you found someone who knows, found the proprietor. Okay, who's Teresa? Well, Teresa was was his his. Beyonce, and then uh, he was, you know, he was shopping around, um, and, and she didn't appreciate that, so she came to me, and, and but I couldn't help her very much, but I got her a horse, and she went off to, to, uh, to the capital, of course, and, and, and Tom never forgave me for that, you know, cut me out of the business, because he just, he, 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 he didn't think what he was doing was wrong, and it's all part of the plan, and I didn't know what the plan was. Uh, you know, he's he's a, he's a real piece of work, that Tom. He's also gotten way crazier over the years. <laughs> but I don't know. What do you mean by that? Well, was, you know, talking about. You know, at first he was like, "I'm gonna bring these. I found these artifacts." I want to buy the chapel. I want to uh, inhabit the chapel and, and do the museum. That makes sense. You know, history, great, good. Uh, you know, it brings in the, gets people to come in, maybe to the town, revitalize stuff. The first few years, you know, he was making good. He was finding artifacts. He was bringing them into town. You know, he even had some of the old folks telling tales up at the chapel and. Seemed like people liked it, but then he just kind of 
I don't know, he started to, to, to think about other things. Like, he was really interested in, 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 in finding the history of the chapel and in researching that kind of stuff. And he had said before that the chapel was important historically, but he didn't really, like, get into it. And because he was doing that, he left the locals out of it. He, he cut me out after the whole Teresa thing. And then it just kind of went downhill. Like, he started selling off artifacts. Um, and I was like, hey, you collected all these artifacts, you shouldn't sell them off. And he's like, well, I need to keep keep it business. And then now you, you come up with this chapel and there's like four or five artifacts. And I go, well, those are cool, but uh, what else? And then people leave and you don't get a lot of money. And, you know, it's just, he's just messed it up for himself. You say that he was cutting out the locals that knew about the chapel. Who are those locals? Well, I mean, you've, you've probably talked to Rob. Rob's the guy that, uh, you know, got people who have a lot of experience in the town before the calamity, and some of them, um, a lot of the older folks who went to the chapel could tell about the, the you know, the services to the goddess, the, the god up there, and was, you know, basking in the Fast going to the weekly services and things. Although apparently, chapel wasn't in great condition when the calamity hit anyway, and then it kind of went downhill after that. Uh, but but yeah, we had a few. You could talk to Rob. Rob goes in that tavern. You could talk to him if you want. But a lot of the old timers kind of are touchy talking about the old times. You know, I don't blame them. Okay. But. I, uh, but I think we need to find out more about the chapel. Care less about Tom. If we find out about what Tom cared about, why he gave two hoots about the chapel, then I think we can really zero in on what happened. Hi. Um, yeah. So he's just kind of like, well, okay. You know, uh, it, it, was, it was right about the time that Tom opened the catacombs up that he started to change. So, we need that. Mm. So, Bob is this guy's recommendation for and the Autopop Chapel. Didn't we fucking kill Rob? No. No. Oh, okay, good. Uh, we sent Rob, him on his merry way to go drink. Yeah, Rob was the old guy you encountered in town who just started to talk your ear off. He was the guy you came into town. I don't know if Matthew was here for that. Might have not been. I wasn't. Oh, yeah, because he was sick. He was sick. So you guys walked into town and you saw the sign for the for the chapel, like, oh, come experience the golden age or whatever. And then an old guy was like, oh, you don't need that. Let me tell you about the old age. And then he just kind of started talking. <laughs> so that's who Rob is. He's an old carpenter. And Tom is the proprietor. Tom is the proprietor. I'm going to turn to this guy and say, what would you say? I told you, Tom, no longer a problem. Well, I. Are you telling that to the guy who's just who you found? Guy that had something to say about Tom. Yeah, he kind of goes, "Oh well, that's good. I'm glad." Uh, a little confused. He didn't. He seemed rather attached to the chapel. Sometimes, you know, he had his own place. Uh, that he proclaimed uh, down by the town hall, but he would always stay up in the is it, uh, Paul here. those priest quarters because he just couldn't bear to leave the chapel after a while. But say so he has mean, a place by the river. Uh, he has a place by by the town hall. You go down here, wow. you go past. Uh, he points out like he shows you how to get there. It's a nice little place. Uh, he fixed it up a little bit with with some help of the locals, but. 
He hasn't been there in a long time. He mostly stayed up by the... in that chapel house. That rundown place, because he couldn't be parted from his precious chapel. I only bring it up because uh, you know, I, I hear that he, uh, he got into some, some interesting uh, troll type things and uh, something went sideways. I don't know all the details, but. Uh... Oh, something went sideways. Well, that will be, the, be the first interesting thing happening in Raska in a long time, so. That's nice. I mean, if, if you're. Uh, if, you're uh, easy enough. For, um, what's do we know this guy's name? Sorry. Um, uh, you gotta do this to me. Uh, right. His name is Travis. Travis. All right. So uh, you know, Travis, uh, if you're an easy enough one to find, and you have some interest in these goings on, you know, if we do find out some more information, we'll we'll, we'll track you down. Uh, I appreciate it. I suppose. Thank you. Thank you for. Uh, Letting us know what you know about um, whatever. I don't know. I think that there would be much more particularly than that. Um, then, yeah, I think we should go to the uh, to Bulgar and Haya. I think we should go to the uh, town's house. So you find out where Tom lives. I, you know, and recount the whole thing. I am. You, you recount it to us, I guess. And, uh... So now you know where the Tom house is. Uh, you also know that he stayed a lot up at that chapel house that you investigated briefly. Right, well. You, investigated. you looked in the window and went, no one's here. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I, think if we, I think we go to the Tom house first. All right. And then we can go back up to the chapel house. Oh, you going to the right. Um. Oh, we got Ati face. Hello, Ati face. Uh, my Man. hand is killing me. Um, <laughs> the the carpal tunnel is progressively getting worse. Um, mm. my hand is buzzing all the time. My fingers are like numb. Oh boy. Not cool. Not cool. Not fun. Not good times. So we are going to this guy's house and ask him what. Well, Tom's the not there. Door. Tom was sucked into the portal. Mm-hmm. Oh, so we are going to a dead man's like house to spend the night as. Well, ho- mm, hopefully what? to find out what the nature of the ritual he was performing was. Okay. Although Lud like, actually what's... has the the book that um, they were reciting from. But okay. maybe he'll have like some notes, his research about the book, because Bargain's not going to be able to understand the book, you know? But maybe... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe uh, maybe at Tom's townhouse, we can find the nature of the magic that took Jarl from us. You are on the way to the Tom's house. And as you're going, you kind of, you, as you get closer to town hall, you see a lot more of the, so this is like a sprawling sort of abandoned metropolis in a way. So as you're kind of getting to the main town square, you sort of see this theme, more people, uh, less of the buildings are abandoned, but it's still only like one or two layers of houses along this main street that are inhabited and then the ones past it are pretty abandoned and run down. But as you're kind of walking, you know, you you find where uh, Travis pointed out where Tom lived. Um, it looked this. It looks like it, um, you know, has been refurbished in the last few in the last decade, but it hasn't been really upkept. So you know the the paint is chipping, you know, the shingles look like some of them are falling off, but it's still in decent livable condition. Alright. Well, so, go ahead. 
standing outside of this uh, tumble down townhouse, Balgar is going to uh, approach the front entrance and see if it is enterable or if it is locked. Um, it is indeed, it is locked. Um, but the door, you're kind of inspecting it, the door doesn't look like it would be too hard to push over or crack into. If you just put, you know, some an elbow uh, shoulder against it and pushed it in, it wouldn't be too hard to break into it. Well, Herf Herfa mentioned he can pick locks. However, I'm going to try a quick strength check, even though there's a large chance I'm going to fail. Um... Well, here it's going to attempt <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my strength plus zero, so it's a raw roll. Um, yeah, I'm over here. Let's uh, just colors are in the way. Okay. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Come on. Five. Nice. Ow! You bastard. Whoa. Oh, that's stinging. That is stinging. Right. Verfa. Well, hiya. Knock this thing do not something. Oh, I'll stand. I'll step out of the way of the uh, portal. No pun intended. So, Haya, do you want to that in? Physically open the door. Yeah. Sure. Uh, do I make a uh, just make a sh attack or like a strength check? Yeah, do a strength check. Twenty-one. What do what? Yeah, it goes down. So Belger, you know, he walked up. He kind of goes, ah, oh, oh, well, this this door is a hefty door, uh huh. Mm -hmm. but Haya, you go ahead. And then Haya just kind of, just, almost it looks like Haya almost just leans on it, and it just kind of falls open. <laughs> right. Well, that's and that's one way to do it. <laughs> then last one in, uh, Fairfly is going to stand the door back up, and. You know, to get the one try to get the hinges to you know sort of hang on each other so that the door at least looks like it's closed and not just a open portal with a door laying on the ground yeah so you do that you, you manage to do it it doesn't look very convincing but also like this place hasn't been really inhabited for a while so it might not be people probably aren't paying attention to it so, so. yeah so you go into this house and you're looking around and this house is um here, let me copy this into Dungeons and Dragons. What's the smell as we come into the house? It smells like damp wood. Kind of like a basement. A, 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 a relatively wet basement smell. So you get the smell of like damp stone, kind of musky wood. Um, the guy wasn't kidding when he said that that Tom didn't really live here a lot uh, because most times he stayed up at the chapel sort of thing. But you do see that this place is a lot more well um, well decorated. It's a two it's a two floor townhouse. Um, it's kind of it's smaller. It has one um, one open room on the bottom and it has you know, maybe two rooms up top uh, with a bed and etc. And the first floor has kind of a kitchen area off to the side or a place like a fire pit with a stove and or with a Dutch oven um, and a hearth and a table next to it. And there's also a sitting, a more sitting area uh, next to the table. Um, and it looks like it has some shelves that do actually have some books on them besides from plates and bowls. Yeah. And then if you walk up to the second one, the second one, the second floor, you kind of see a rather nice looking bed. Uh, it doesn't, it looks well stuffed. The, the frame is made of, you know, nice oak. Um, and then the side room kind of looks like an office sort of area. It looks like it has a writing desk and some papers stacked up next to it and around it. I was going to go uh, investigate the writing desk. Okay. So, 
you guys can place your tokens down. Uh, I don't know how to. I actually don't know how to do that. <laughs> uh, I never remember. You just go That's to from the character your character sheet. sheet. But it's your name, not your picture, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, there's two verifies. Oh, sorry. I oh. just dragged one of you out. I'll delete it. <laughs> okay. I'm there as well. Yeah. I also learned that you can make the the squares of faces just like um, to names. Did you know that? You can change our avatars into just like names on the bottom of the oh. page. Yeah, yeah. yeah on you the can. settings. I didn't know that and it always bugged me. So like I learned the other week that you can just do it. So it feels mm -hmm. really good to be able I to I have them set as like the default size. Yeah. Uh, because that's when we were doing Roll20 in my previous, in my dad's previous campaign, not the current campaign. We had our webcam on Roll20, and we only did voice and Discord. And then we all realized mm -hmm. that Roll20 is kind of garbage for that technical yeah. side. So we just switched everything over to Discord. So, but yeah, also, cat break. He, he's been here the whole time, but <laughs> I'm enjoying my cat. <laughs> all right. So yeah, um, everyone who wants to investigate or look around, give me an investigation roll. Oh, I will do. I'm rolling crazy today. There you go. Just yeah. going for it. Uh, investigation? Is that dirty 20? Dirty 20? All right. A 14? Mm, 17? Shit. Is that plus anything? Not. Uh, yeah, it is plus something. It is plus four. So, 18. That's not how you do that. So, 18? Okay. I have to figure out what the command for rolling is. Because you can actually add your pluses in when you roll. I think it's slash R X D Y or something. Uh, or you can just open your character sheet and roll from your character sheet. Yeah, but my. My roll 20 character sheet doesn't match my D&D Beyond one. Oh, sure. So, wow, that sounds like a very personal problem. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, when you're looking in the writing desk, uh, what is Haya looking at? Uh, I'm honestly, I was actually going to give Luke advantage. But I kind of lost in the in, in the moment and rolled for myself. Okay. <laughs> so let's say Haya is helping with, uh, okay. conducting his research and like pointing out. Uh, actually, like I know you're better at this, but like there's this that you didn't see. Uh, like I'm. Oh man, like you also didn't see this. He's like kind of following him and like giving him tips and helping him uh, gather more. Uh, information on what he's looking for. Yeah. Hi, is offering the, uh, the zoomed out perspective because Fairfoot zones in too much on exactly. individual objects. Mm -hmm. uh, and Valgir's looking at the shelves? That's right, I'm looking at the shelves on the ground floor. Okay, so we'll start with the shelves. Is Valgir literate? Huh. Uh, no, his is an oral tradition. Or, okay, so... But he, um... Uh, yeah, he can be... I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so looking... So I can, I can work with it. Sorry, putting my cat. Uh, so looking at the, at the... At the shelves, and you're looking at these books, and you're not quite being able to necessarily make out all of the words on them, but you can recognize a few, a few things or a few pictures or flipping through. Um, these books kind of... Uh, seem like what you would imagine a ledger would look like. So it says we made this much money on this day. There seems to be a few letters that you Magic. recognize to yeah. Travis and Teresa. So you recognize names a little bit. Um, this kind of seems like kind of more of like business thinking, keeping shelves. Um, you do find a few books that you can't categorize that look um, that seem to have dates. On, on like at the top of the page, but you can't can't quite figure out what it is. It might be a diary or something. Um, 
but it's definitely something to bring to someone to look at. Um, and on the desk, with your 17 and a dirty 20, you said? Uh, what did I roll? Dirty 20 for me, yeah. Yeah, I got so 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with your guys' rolls on the desk, so you're looking around, you're kind of finding, you see kind of some drawings that you recognize of, like, the, the crypt. Um, there's some maps that look like he made a layout of the chapel, like a map of it. As well as like, oh, this is where this is going, this is where that's going. Um, it seems like this, it's not quite updated, necessarily. Um, it looks like it's just, you know, this is what this looks like, that's what this looks like, etc., etc. Um, it looks like it's a little bit older, because it does include, this is where locals will sit and tell stories, sort of thing. Um, in the church, you mean? Yeah, in the church, in the church. Sorry. So as you're kind of getting through and looking, these are all like papers. There's not a lot of like found things. But as you're kind of going through these pieces of papers, you start to see a little bit of weird scrawling. Not necessarily like crazed scrawling, but very quickly scribbled notes. Um, like if you're looking at the desk, like here is the desk, um, you can tell that there was a book put on the desk and he was scribbling notes on any pieces of paper that were around the book. <laughs> so you're like, oh, okay, so there was something here and he was writing off to the side. Um, uh, and, like, and you're looking at the notes and reading them and some of them you know, dictate like, oh, we five people needed uh, and it lists like some names like, oh, I need one more. Uh, this person gets in tomorrow, so it looks like he's planning on something. Um, and and then some other notes, you're getting the messages of... Um, yeah. So you're just... You're seeing he's planning something. You do see little scribbles or drawings of sigils that look sim very similar to the sigils that you had that you saw at the ritual circle in the chapel. Um, and you also can kind of start to see that, um, well, because you got a dirty 20 and you got an 18, or like a 16 or whatever. So you get a decent idea that Travis wasn't lying, that he was, that Tom had started to go a little bit not necessarily crazy, but a little bit weird. Um, you can tell a lot of the notes start to get more and more uh, shaky as time went on. So, yeah. Wish Lud was like actually here because then we, <laughs> we could compare the the notes to the, the yeah. book. Um. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, I think maybe it would make sense then to go down and uh, check in with Balgair. Uh, yeah. Maybe it occurs to him that Balgair may not read well. <laughs> We're just going down and be like, hey, have you found anything down here? It's like, I have a book, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, and the, most of the stuff that he found was handwritten as well. So there's not a lot of actual, like, printed books here. A lot of it is his own handwritten notes. I have found a whole bunch of stuff on these shelves. Uh, and he'll point to the ledger's letters and questionable books that he's put on the table. Okay. And uh, Purple will look at those. Okay. So you're looking at this diary, or you're looking at some of the books that he's pulled out, and it kind of confirms that some of them are ledgers, some of them look like old letters, um, and you get to the one that he pulled out that looked like a diary, and it is indeed a diary. And the diary are, you kind of see the diary there's several diaries. There's diaries from when you first got here, and there's diaries from when 
um, for about a few, like, three or four months ago. Um, and also maybe some even, you find a really old diary that is kind of damaged that looks like a diary that might have been from before the shattering and such. But it was very destroyed. <laughs> it looked like it was just kept for sentimental value, but you can't read anything from it. Um, also, it's in ten, like a ten-year-old's handwriting. So it's probably legible anyway. Um, but, give me another investigation roll. roll. That's not good. So, eight. Eight? Okay. So you're kind of skimming a little bit, maybe a little bit too quickly through <laughs> through the diary. Uh, which diary did you would you like to look through? Uh, you said there was a, one when you first got here, and then one later. Yeah, there was one. There's actually a pretty recent one. It looks like it's huh? up to a few months ago. I guess I'll look at the. I don't want to mitigate too bad. I think Verifa would have looked at the more recent one. Okay. Yeah. So you're looking at the, the more recent one. Um, you're kind of getting... You're flipping through, and you get a lot of the sense of places going downhill. He doesn't quite understand what he did wrong. Uh, he's like, I got into a really big argument with Rob the other day, but I don't understand why he's so angry. Like, it seems like he's almost confused at how he has run this building business into the ground um, and he says and you can see there's a fail record like he talks about like uh, this guy from the capital came and he wanted to buy buy this tablet but I wouldn't let him because it's part of the chapel uh, or like he wanted to buy and then like flipping through there was a buyer that came from brain has lost the world from Cheshire that wanted to purchase one of his artifacts. He's like, oh yes, I, you know, they said it was something that would go with the royal set, so I sold that to him. Kevin's really angry, but I didn't understand why. Like, it's making money. What? What? What's the point? Like, kind of echoing what Travis was talking about. Um, but as you kind of go through your, you kind of see that his handwriting is choppier and choppier, and there's a lot more discussion of a book um, and talking about uh, oh well we finally translated this part of the book and and Jonathan says that you know by this point we might be able to actually plan something and I've been I've been trying to read the tome at night trying to figure out what's going on with it and I found this page that talks about a ritual um, and uh, I want to recreate history and by living it, so I'm going to get a bunch of people around to do this ritual, and and you can kind of flip through. You don't have that great of an investigation, um, but um, but like going through, you can see that he plans it. He gets. It seems like he almost wants to reenact the history of the chapel. Um, that kind of seems like what the main thrust of the whole museum was was to reenact, <laughs> to figure out what the history was and to show it off. Um, but as you're reading through the, ten the, the diary and figuring out that kind of stuff, you realize that he kind of buys into the reenactment in a way. He, he's like, well, we, we found out that this, this curse doesn't actually, um, it seems like uh, he did a few reenactments for the deity of piety and knowledge, uh, but then he found the ritual for the ritual book for this other deity, this chaos deity. And he's like, oh, well, if this is really what they were doing, well, we should do that. And then you see that he kind of pivots into trying to translate this tome and figure out what this tome is. And you do see uh, writings of of Malik, who you knew before was the deity that was kind of scrawled, incorporated into the symbols of the church. Um, and then he said, like, oh, and, and recently the, there's been priests that have come around 
what's interesting, um, as like about three or four months ago, he wrote in his thing, um, his like last entry was, oh, there are priests from other covens that have come to bask in the glory of Malik to learn his secret and find out all of this beautiful magic, magical knowledge with me. And that's the last, um, the last entry is these okay. priests from a different coven coming in to Malik. Well, Kerfa, while he's reading that, is, you know, muttering as much of it as he can out loud, you know. And so I would say that everybody around, prob the four is probably the fact that it's like sort of a broken, that that's what everybody gets sort of as like it's like a collective four because <laughs> you know it's it's I'm getting just bits and pieces and just you know speaking of Noah. yeah um okay. right well are you thinking what i'm thinking uh if you're thinking that you're no good at paradoxes then yes i'm thinking that our boy Tom had some help. And maybe he was in way over his head. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah. No. It's higher there. So that was it. Tom was just fucking patsy, man. Just. Yeah. It is. It, I, I believe it is their god who we should go after. Or whatever form of divine energy he is. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. These, pop, these people are just like pawns on a chess, chess board. They're nothing more. We need to we need to find out maybe who these other priests were and where they came from and go there to a, a, a coven of Malak. Aye, then we'll get our revenge. Okay. I, I don't know. How do you how, how do you fight a god? How do you, do you fight find a, a coven? What? How do you find a coven? Aye. I think a coven finds you. <laughs> In Mother Russia, coven finds you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It may actually be a good place to leave it, because I have to leave. This is true. I was kind of thinking that we... This is going to be... These ones are going to be shorter. Are we okay with doing weekly? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm free on Friday afternoons. Um, as, as weekly as we can make it. I'll say that. Yeah. 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 Uh, cool. And then I'm, I'm perfectly fine with a, a short session. I know this session has only been about two and a half hours, but I yeah. need to go, like, grocery shopping. But, yeah, um, what we kind of, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm going to say one quick, up, like, above the table, like, DM question. Not, yes. I mean, and if it, if you can't answer it without spoiling something, that's fine. I mean, was this, so going to this um, townhouse, did, did we, did you, did we accomplish what two locations was meant to accomplish in the townhouse? Or would yeah. it be worth us going to the other location? <laughs> yeah, you accomplished pretty much what a, you kind of to kind of do a, a grandiose overarch like um, I didn't know what you guys were going to be doing today. I was like either maybe they're going to investigate a lot or they're just going to leave. <laughs> they're going to be like, I we're going to leave this town and go find Carl. Like I didn't know what you guys were planning on doing or what you thought we were going to do, but the investigation you got pretty much what. Um, to get out of the town. You got pretty much what you need to get out of it. Sounds to um, me like we are about to start a 
holy war and purge the land of uh, the followers of Malik. Um, but the problem is that how do you win a holy war? <laughs> level four. How do you? <laughs> level four. At level four. Hey, uh, just because you get into the Holy War at level four doesn't mean you're going to finish the Holy War at level four. <laughs> yeah, and it probably means that you will die, but we'll see. We just got to start killing these cultists, you know, calling them cultists, you know, and, and just go kill from them. but, like, if you kill enough of those, the, the deity comes and, like, What's up, motherfucker? You've been killing my uh, acolytes. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a talk mm -hmm. about this. We're gonna, we're gonna have and a little chit chat. Yeah. <laughs> please sit down. Oh, please. Chat. Sit down. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm taking you to the level of abyss with me. <laughs> um, you are going to be Sounds like if we're gonna kill there. a god, we need to find the god, another god, opposed to that god, right? Uh -huh. And get on their side. I'm sure you cannot do that by rolling a like a uh, persuasion check. <laughs> right. So I mean, might not be there. <laughs> it might be more than the persuasion check on a D20. Well, the yeah, DC but, is like 58. Or uh, alternatively, like um, in in another game I play, uh, there's a literal divine war. I mean, it's 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 in the Cold War era or like before the war era, mm -hmm. uh, but technically we are the clerics are having the fight. Mm -hmm. Clerics and the paladins and the followers are having the fight, and in this party, I don't think anybody is or no, has divine fire. connections. No, not no. I'm not even like a divine caster. Nobody has no divine connections with. Any I mean, or all of all of Verfa's ancestors are druids, so I mean that's I mean that's not that's nothing. You have a you connection I mean? to Pan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's some sort of like a divine connection, but there's not necessarily God. Yeah. And or you could raise an army of tree ants or something. But... Okay. Well, that's not a today problem. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to run, folks. Okay. Alrighty, bye. Good game, Luke. Bye. Thanks for See you later. Bye. So, I mean, there's the question, like, that I have asked uh, when uh, Yao died, how does a character survive uh, mm -hmm. from, a, from such a loss? I mean, I lost a lot of family members. Yeah. But they were all some way or another in convenient times where I didn't have to do anything but to grieve. So this is a bit different. Uh, we we kind of have to think through it and find a meaningful art from this thing because I mean, I can play higher in rage until the game ends and we die or like we kill everyone but i don't think that's gen generally not a not a like great for great for parties it kind of kills the vibe becoming murder hobos you know it, kill, it, kill, it really kills the vibe man <laughs> yeah a lot of killing kills the vibe uh, no, I think that as long uh, as as long as we work towards the party has a motivation now, right? Which is which is vengeance, and we need to articulate that vengeance. Mm -hmm. And now we have somebody to put that vengeance against, Malik, you know, and now we just need to operationalize Malik, you know, figure out what Malik means in the world, and then destroy those things. Um, and if there's another god or an, an opposing um, deity, institution, pantheon that we can uh, align ourselves with, then maybe we have to go and, um, you know, uh, find out what we need to do to, to join their ranks, right? Maybe we have to go on a quest to prove ourselves. Who knows? Yeah, and, and there's a possibility of me uh, swapping my subclass 
from uh, from Berserker to Path of Salad. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how this how how Morgan would work this, but I can technically make kind of a call for, for, for a god, and with the with that kind of divine intervention, mm -hmm. uh, my subclass can change and. Haya can become a sort of a follower of a god plus uh, plus carrying that kind of uh, power with him. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I don't think I'd have an issue with swapping subclass, especially since uh, what you get your subclass level three, and you're only like level four. So I like love love maybe saying, hey, I'm gonna do swap this, and this is the role play. Maybe we can incorporate it into a session to where you're like, hey, Haya is now going to go do this thing and come actualize or something. So that's probably something we should like kind of prep before session between you and I. Yeah, and if you want to if you want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you also have the option of the box. What? You do have the black tablet about the world ending. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, nobody can decipher them so far. Yeah, well, and you also have you also lost Jarl, who knows Undercommon, but you know Undercommon, so you kind of... I, I know Undercommon, too. Um, but you have the box that you can go investigate. So that's kind of in the background, I think, at this point, is being like, oh, right, we happen to have this box, so... Yeah, it's the, the yeah. way is, the, the, I think the, the part of the problem for us is that... Uh, we don't have a intelligent based caster. We don't have a wisdom. You calling me stupid? You're not an intelligent based caster. You're a wisdom based caster, and you're not wise either. So. <laughs> you know, he's living uh, his best life. <laughs> I I think today was a bit too much for Balgir, and he had to be the the reasonable one. <laughs> yeah, Balgir is really more of a, you know. Uh, we need to, yeah, yeah. I mean, ba well, you know, Balgir is usually the one that other people have to get home drunk. You know, he's not usually the designated driver. <laughs> he's just in there. He's like, uh, I liked. I don't know if it's just because you haven't played him in a while or not, but I liked how angry Balgir was. Like, I'm going to intimidate this person really badly, and I'm like, this is like, like Balgir. But then again, maybe Balgir is like, this is what Jarl would do. So I guess I'll just pretend to be Jarl. Right, maybe. I mean, I've got a charisma of seven, right? So, I mean, forced into a position where everything's falling apart around us. That was just Bagheer's best stab in the dark, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, um, I don't know if there's anything you want to say at the end of the stream, but... Um, no, I think I'm good. That's good. So I'm going to take us off air now. All right. Bye, guys. Right. Bye, 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 stream.